Hello everyone. Today we're going to take a look at this clock, which is a 400 day clock, a year clock, or more technically called a torsion spring pendulum clock. These clocks are very popular, 60s, 70s, like most of the clocks that come in with me for repair are from the 70s. Torsion spring pendulum clocks have been around for way longer than that, but they had, like, they were very popular, um, 60s, 70s, mostly 70s. They're really nice clocks, very mesmerizing to look at. They were pretty affordable too. They run for 400 days, that's why they were also called year clocks. People used to wind those on New Year's Eve. Which was basically a thing like, yeah, to remind them. Because otherwise a clock that you need to wind once a year, what a better day to remember it than New Year Eve. Um, another thing about this clock is we call them year clocks, but they do run for 400 days. That is the same cl um, reasoning behind um, like alarm clocks, wristwatches, um, AT clocks. AT clocks are called week clocks because well they run for a week with one day as a margin. Same for alarm clocks, um, most alarm clocks will do 36 hours. Um, same for watches, they also will do more than just one day because well you need to have a margin if you forget or like wake up a bit a little bit later you still need to be able to wind it also like it's just not really strictly one day you always have a bit of margin so same here we call them year clocks but they actually run for 400 days one of the ways of achieving those 400 days is that um, the period is very long so between the tic tacs that can be up to like 12 seconds in some models of these clocks and i don't know if it will show up on camera but yeah you can see the the minute hand jumps uh, not often uh it's going to jump about now yeah and then the next time it's going to jump is now. So you see there's a lot of there's a lot of time in between the so that's the period. Um and yeah, that's one of the ways they make them run for so long. There is a rather large mainspring in it for a clock like this. But the main reason um is that um yeah just just a very long period. So, these clocks um, use a tension spring pendulum and a tension spring pendulum is very fragile. That is why those clocks will have a lock to block the pendulum while moving them. And it is something that if you own one of these clocks, plan on buying one of these clocks. If you want to move them, you need to block the pendulum. I cannot stress this enough. You will damage it you will damage the the torsion spring and the thing with damaging the torsion spring is it might look fine but once it's damaged you will never be able to get this clock running correctly it will not keep time if the torsion spring is damaged so that's why they have a lock i will show you the locking mechanism on this clock there is another kind of locking mechanism which is also commonly found on these clocks. I don't have one of those, but I will explain it and like it's easy enough to understand. Another thing that I'm going to show in a bit later is how to make this clock stand level because it's really important that these clocks are more or less level. It doesn't like it needs to be reasonably level for those to work. 
that's the most important thing. It doesn't need to be a hundred percent level either. But I will show you how to level them. It's not that hard. Um, then I will show you the torsion pendulum, but um, I will remove the cover because there's a protective cover too. But for now, let's just um, set the camera up so you can have a look in the side of the movement. So here we are, side of the movement. You can see here uh, main spring barrel. You can see part of the gear train, but they're not really important. It's just the gear train. Um, but no, the business is here. You can see here you have the escapement here. So basically you have the entry wheel, the entry wheel itself, and then it goes up. Um, you can see that piece of metal there. And then you have your fork here. So basically you have this which is attached to the entry and then it goes into a fork. There is not much play in the fork, almost no play at all. But it works because basically the torsion spring on itself introduces a lot of play in between the pendulum itself and the rest of the movement. So yeah, you can see it going up and down rather nicely. Let's move it a little bit. So that's a tick. So basically this um, this fork is just um, attached to a little um, brass block that's clamped into the torsion spring. And then the torsion spring is just attached to the pendulum balls on the underside. And well, it just creates torsion. That's all it does. <laughs> um, so, let's turn it around and um, I will show you the cover. Gently moving it around. So here you can see the top of the pendulum and then you can see the really fine um, torsion spring in its cover. I will remove the cover in a bit, but it's just to give you an idea how it looks like now. So here we have it. Um, so you can now see the torsion spring doing its thing. You can kind of see it because of the the way the light reflects. Um, and then you can see the underside of the pendulum. Um, so here this ring is basically how to regulate this clock. There's a plus and a minus on there somewhere. Oh no, in here there's a plus and a minus on the brackets. You can see here there's little arrows. Um, basically, regulating is that you take the pendulum and then you will turn this disco. It's, um, yeah, it's really firm. But, so, turn it to the left or to the right. Um, and basically what you are doing is, there's a, a screw here and there's a mechanism and basically it will push those balls out um, more or less to regulate it. Now let's go a bit more downwards because here you can see this collet here. This collet is the way to lock the pendulum in place. So if I turn there's a screw there and I can turn that card upwards like this and now 
the pendulum is pressed till uh, against this bracket. And the pendulum is now well firm enough in place, and you can see even the torsion spring is now basically loose. There's, there's no pressure on it at all. And this collar is also um, the way to, like, it's basically a point to look at in order to um, make it level. So as you can see, now it is not level at all. So, let me turn it around, because it's always best to start from the front. So, right now, if you want to make this level, because of, like, basically gravity, you want... Um, this to be in the center of this collet. Right now, it is leaning to the left. So, there are these little discs here you can turn. So, because it's pointing to the left, we either want this to rise or this to give down. So, depending on how they are set, um, so I'm going to put this one downwards. Now let it waggle out a bit. So, now we are pretty much in the center, but we are a bit, it's leaning a bit towards the front. We want to make it in the level in all directions. So on the back, there's another one of those wheels. So, I want to put that um, a bit more up. So, sometimes you need to persuade them a bit. This one is rather stuck. So, this one is in all the way. So, what we now need to do, because this one is in all the way, but it's still not there, we need to turn both of these in the same direction. To Because if we, if we change one of them, we are going to change this direction, but now we have to turn them both out. So, let's do that. Let's turn this one out. Just a bit more. Now it is pretty much level, but I'm pretty sure we stopped the clock, so we can just a little swing, nothing too much. Because if you do it too much, you can end up um, over torsioning the torsion spring, which also damages it, so yeah, that is not good. Now, one more thing I want to show you, and that is the other way of locking the pendulum in place for moving it and that is the other way of moving it is a mechanism that is here at the bracket and like if you see a lever here or on this side doesn't really matter it's worth to say you need to lift up the pendulum and then you engage the lever and there's basically a collet that goes around a ring in the on the pendulum and that locks it into place so yeah that was all the explanation i wanted to do about it 
really fascinating clocks by the fact that like they don't move a lot um like the gear frame doesn't make a lot of movement over those uh, 400 day periods because like i said because of the um the period of like 10 to 12 seconds um they don't really wear out that much the movements don't wear out super much so they are very reliable clocks pendulums um the torsion swings they do often need replacement but that's more because of people mistreated them um they tend not really to wear out they can wear, wear out they used to be made of um Alinvar metal, so Invar, but um, sounds like Invar, but it's not, it's Alinvar. Um, I can't remember what, um, because it's an alloy, what's in that alloy. However, I will put it um, on the screen. Um, and yeah, that was it for this clock. So. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye!